Bigger, Chapter 9, Part 2, Page 76, Last Paragraph. Almost a man. Tyler had never thought of himself in such a way. He was Black Jack Bohannon's son, still only a boy. But soon, like Isaac, he'd be a man himself. He'd still be his father's son, but something more. He'd have to decide important things, would be even more responsible than he was now. After they crossed the Tuttle River, Isaac turned to face Tyler. Guess this is where we got to go different ways, he said. Before she died, my mama told me I'd find shelter down there with folks she'd known a long time back. He pointed through the trees. He didn't hurry away, though. Instead, he brushed his feet back and forth in the yellow dust and seemed to have something on his mind. Tyler wondered if they ought to shake hands. It would be the decent thing to do. He'd shaken hands with Uncle Matt and even would have shaken Clayton's plump mitt if that little mama's boy hadn't insisted on staring at the points of his shoes as if he saw a prince's reflection down there. Before he could decide what to do, Isaac held out the fishing pole he'd made the second day they traveled together. You take this here rig, Ty, he said. I can get more twine if I needs it from those folks who'll take me in. This'll help you feed yourself as you travel all the way down there to Mexico. It was a fine parting gift, Tyler realized, one that he'd be thankful for many times over. He took the pole gratefully. Thank you kindly, Isaac he mumbled. Tyler wished there was something he could give the other boy that would matter, something that would make life as much easier as the pole would make his own. Isaac brushed his bare feet in the dust again, then turned to go. Hold on a minute, Tyler commanded, and set his pack in the road. He opened it up and fished out the shoes he'd packed inside. These are for you. Take them, Isaac. My stars, Isaac whispered. A pair of shoes? Might be too little for these big old feet, though. He knelt down and put them on. No, sir. They feel fine, he studied Tyler doubtfully. Isaac don't have far to go, though. You got miles to travel yet, Ty Bohannon. He pulled his feet out of the shoes and held them out. Better you take them back. They'd be too good to give away to the likes of me. Tyler tied up his pack. No, they're yours now, Isaac. You got traveling to do, same as me. Isaac nodded. His chip-toothed smile was shy. He put the shoes back on, laced them up. Good luck, he said. I hope you find your daddy. Good luck to you, too, Tyler echoed. Now the war's over, I hope you'll get to meet that other Isaac Pierce someday, he added. He watched as Isaac walked down the road and descended the hill toward a patch of trees. There, Isaac Pierce turned and waved for a long, long time. Tyler had thought it would be easy to part, that Isaac hadn't mattered much. After all, they'd only traveled together four days. He was a black boy, not someone like Oat Snap, who'd been a chum since they started going to Mr. Blackburn's school together. But Isaac and me are more alike than we are different, Tyler realized. Both Isaac and me are looking for our fathers. Isaac, not looking too hard yet. Me figuring I know just where I'll find mine. Tyler waved, squinting until Isaac became smaller, small, smaller, only a speck, then vanished completely. Good luck, Isaac, he called again softly, glad he'd given him the shoes. What's a queer thing, Bigger? He murmured, surprised. Till this morning, I didn't know it can make a person feel better to give something away than to hang on to it. Bigger listened attentively, and in the yellow dust, his tail marked off another quarter hour.